Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 284 of the Drunk Dash Podcast. I'm your host as always, I'm Tyler, and joining me, we have the man, the myth, the legend himself, Sir Colonel Gables. What's up, buddy? Hey, Tyler. <laughs> nice to have you back after a long, long <laughs> getaway, I guess, for your vacation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, good to be back. Oh, well, from my neck of the woods and stuff, it's pretty much the same business as usual, going through, doing my work, doing my rounds and stuff, but I have been doing some purchasing over the past couple days where I've bought the season pass for the Dragon Ball Fighters game, and I decided to take a risk and, like, just go down the rabbit hole, and I just dove in headfirst and buying that World of Warcraft expansion, that Battle for Azeroth, that releases next week. This, this is how our show ends, guys, right here. Just <laughs> gets addicted to World of Warcraft. <laughs> Did not see that coming. Oh, I didn't see this coming either. If you would have told me by the start of this, just the beginning of this year or something like that, that I would play through pretty much like eight Pokemon games in a row and then all of a sudden, miraculously, mysteriously get addicted to World of Warcraft, I would have said you're on fucking drugs. <laughs> but other than that, though, yeah. You know, it's just been one hell of a week. So how have you been, Tyler? Doing pretty good, man. Uh, trying to get back into reality a little bit uh, this week after, uh, obviously, people don't may not remember or maybe didn't listen last week. Uh, we did like a, we recorded two episodes in one night a couple weeks ago, released a, a kind of like a little extra fun episode, and um, I, was, I was in Vegas meeting the Taco Ship guys. Uh, 10-year reunion. It was pretty great. There was uh, 19 of us there, which was uh, pretty crazy. Uh, had uh, the time of my life. Um, I slept nine hours over four days, oh. uh, which was pretty brutal. Um, but luckily, there was a, a Starbucks every uh, 100 square feet. So uh, I was well caffeinated for that time. But then I slept, I felt like, for two days after... Uh, I got back on Sunday uh, night. Um, yeah, it was it was fun. I uh, I'm just run through real quick. Uh, went out there Thursday. Got the Thursday afternoon room with Jake um, from US. We started the show with over five years ago, um, and uh, it was fun meeting Jake. Uh, we uh, like I said, room with him. Uh, he snores like crazy though, uh, hence why I only got nine hours of sleep over four days. Um, then uh. It was really cool. Uh, so I think the first night we were there, um, there was nine of us that were, were there on Thursday. Then everybody, there were, the rest came in on uh, on Friday, and um, it was yeah, it was really cool. Like uh, there was like um, Vindali was there, Miss Drunky was there, uh, Fisherman was there, his wife was there, uh, it was Jake, uh, I think Jason and Chelsea were there. Um, but it was fun. We like we went, uh, we not planning to uh where we were staying at the treasure island uh, hotel is on like pretty much towards the end of the strip and the strip itself is like five miles long wow and we zigzagged our way across to newark new york which is a hotel on the opposite side of the uh, strip oh, no. uh so yeah so we walked a long ways it was like over the course of like i don't know it was like 10 hours it was just a non it was it was like uh it was like it felt like thursday felt like three days in one where there's like me waiting to get on my flight me uh waiting at the airport and flying to vegas and then the actual time in vegas so thursday was an exhausting day plus uh going from central time to pacific time so gaining two hours uh my body was all sorts of messed up uh, <laughs> the jet lag is it was awesome <laughs> yeah uh, uh when we got back to the hotel i was just like i gotta go lay down for a little while um but uh, we went to like this. We, we tried going to this dueling piano bar in New York, New York. There's a whole reason we went down there, and uh, just to stand at the bar was five dollars a person. Huh? Yeah, not to sit. I think like to sit down was like fifteen dollars a person, uh, but Ooh. to stand at a bar was five dollars. I'm like, that's okay. So we went to this bar that was like next to that place, so we could still he- hear the music. So I'm like, well, you guys are stupid, and we can just listen to the music over here. Like, each casino and every, like, it's just, the strip is just a giant mall. Um, like, it's just, but you can walk outside, and there's, like, it's just a million malls in wow. one. And, uh, like, it just never ends. Um, there's, you, I could have spent probably two days in just my casino alone that I was staying in, or hotel I was staying in. 
Okay. <laughs> Woo, buddy. Woo. There you go. That's been a long time coming. I'm gonna hold that in for like for like two minutes. I th- I thought I could make it. I, I couldn't make it. Um, woo. But anyways, uh, so what was I saying? Oh yeah, I could spend like two days just in in the hotel we were in alone. I, I didn't see everything in there. There's like two dozen stores, three Starbucks in there, uh, plus the casino itself. Uh, there was a whole second floor that I didn't even go on to that leads to like a giant mall that was next door. Um, it was crazy. Uh, so, yeah. So then like on Friday, Jitterbug and Nurse and Justin and uh, Kobe and Cam. First Cam, speaking of, the uh, the man on the coffee cup, as my sister uh, calls him. Um, <laughs> the first thing I did when I saw him is I grabbed his butt and it was glorious. <laughs> I just walked up and I gave him the biggest hug and I grabbed his butt. I couldn't. I told him I was gonna show him who, who what a rasman really was. Oh, um, no. So it was great. Um, yeah. So yeah, it was a lot of fun. So like it was pretty cool. So like, ended up all nineteen of us were uh, staying. We mostly it was like we call it the headquarters, the ship headquarters, which was Jitterbug and Nerves had like a shared suite, and we were gonna go out to this really nice restaurant I talked about a couple weeks ago that was like the prices weren't in the menu, and before we went, Nerves and uh, Jitterbug wanted to play a game called Is It an Energy Drink or Is It Soap? Uh, oh, so oh, we no. broke into two teams of six, oh. and they had two they had two cups in front of uh, red solo cups in front of us, and we couldn't look at them or smell them. And it was uh, they asked us, okay, we're gonna name off two things here, and you gotta guess which one's soap and which one's uh, energy drink, just based off the names. And one cup had Red Bull in it, the other cup had some liquid soap in it. And um, like, okay, is it li- which one's energy drink, live wire or like Mountain Blast? And you were rock paper scissors. It was head to head, rock paper scissors. Whoever won the head, to, uh, the the uh, rock paper scissors got to pick which one they thought was the energy drink. And you had to close your eyes, plug your nose, and whoever whatever you thought what the, the the energy drink was, you drank that one. And uh, so one person would drink Red Bull, the other person would drink soap. Um, <laughs> so luckily for me, uh, mine was the Red Bull. Uh, a couple people didn't know because uh, the because you couldn't really tell with the texture of it. Like, is that soap or is that Red Bull? Even when, like one drinking it, people were like, "I can't tell if this is soap or Red Bull." <laughs> and a couple people actually drank it and got really sick. Oh, uh, oh uh, no! Uh, people don't know soap. Uh, we'll give you diarrhea um, very badly <laughs> yeah oh yeah so they had to leave early that night to go uh, <laughs> go back to the room um then um we uh went to this like really like, really nice restaurant some of the best food i've ever had in my entire life um i don't like wine at all so uh farva's wife uh kept insisting that i drink wine so we started doing shots of wine together um which was awful. Uh, I thought I was going to be sick from drinking all that wine. Uh, and then end up, she just got really wasted and uh, herself instead. Oh, and uh, so her and Farva actually got like rented this room out for us to this Asian karaoke bar to um, for like three or four hours of karaoke. And they were there for like an hour and they had to leave because uh, she was so messed up. Uh, and uh, there is videotape of me out there somewhere. Uh, singing Nala's Broccoli Crazy <laughs> and Queen's uh, uh, I Want to Break Free, I think. Um, so, yeah, that was a blast. And then at one point, because uh, there was three microphones, Jitterbug bent down to go grab a microphone and Nerves, like, flung his hand out and sent back to right in the face. It was wonderful. <laughs> I lost my shit. I fell on the floor laughing so hard. Um, it was great. Uh we had no voices, I think, on Saturday. Everybody's voice was hurt. Our throat was hurting. Uh, what else did we do? Um, yeah, the, uh, Mutton Chop uh, from Australia is like a coffee whore a, or a connoisseur, I guess. And if you ever ask him to go to Starbucks, he'd get mad at you. So we took a $20 Uber, Uber ride to, I don't know where, like the, like the roughest area probably of uh, uh, Vegas you can go to where at one point there was um, – a bunch of like women that I assume are like cheap hookers, uh, so, like just standing on the corner and uh, surrounding a guy. I don't know what was happening to him. Uh, hopefully, good things. Shake down. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, hopefully. And uh, went and got this delicious coffee. 
uh, I bought a, uh, a growler of it, which is like a gallon of cold brew from there, and it was delicious. Um, they actually have like in like in the coffee they have a little, like they make designs in the coffee, and it was like really cool. And then you drank the coffee, and the design was still there at the bottom of the cup. I don't know how they do it, but it's crazy. It was good. Um, I bought a. I went on Saturday. I went inside to do some shopping, get some like gifts and stuff like that. And I found at the there's a CVS in there, inside the the hotel, which I spent a lot of money at because um, it's actually like reasonable prices, like the beer and stuff was. And I found a bright to be stash, uh, like they have like the uh, Miss American pageant and stuff like that. It was pink and it said bright to be on it, and I wore that around for a little while <laughs> um, on the strip and everything. Uh, then uh, we had a BMDD on Saturday night. Um, at one point. Uh, Jitterbug asked me to show me, uh, to show me, uh, or show him my nipples. So I took my shirt off. <laughs> and there is pictures out there as well on the Talking Shit Facebook group. If you're interested in that, I don't know why it would be, but it's there. Um, so yeah, um, yeah. So then uh, got back to the room and just sat around for like eight hours, nine hours, waiting to get on my uh, plane. I had to go sit at the uh, airport airport for three hours because my flight got delayed like an hour. Um, yeah, that sucked. And then um, we went to go land finally back in Des Moines. And we had to like sloop back around twice. Or t- tw- tw- yeah, twice. Um, because there was too much wind. So we had uh, – there was too much of a tailwind. So uh, I was supposed to get home at like 4.30 on sunday and didn't get end up getting landing until after six o'clock so um and at that point like i think all of like the fun you know the hanging out with all these guys meeting these guys it was exhilarating nerve-wracking um and uh just thrilling and you're in vegas and i'm hopped up on fucking cold brew and nitro coffees from starbucks for four days uh finally hit me like i was waiting to get on the plane uh on sunday and i just got hit this wall and barely could talk i was mumbling like you would have thought i was like hammered the way i was like i could had like no motor skills whatsoever um i tried playing like games on the switch on the way home and i couldn't even do the base like i couldn't even play captain toad that game's not even that hard I, i couldn't i just couldn't function with the controls i played picross too a lot um so yeah, uh, I was exhausted. I got home, talked to my family for a little while, ate dinner, and uh, slept for like 10, 11 hours straight. Yep, sounds uh, about right. Yeah, so luckily I took Monday off, and I basically spent the entire day laying in bed and uh, trying to catch up on some sleep. And it really took until we have, we have uh, we had, they shut the plant down on Friday because um, we have the state fair going on uh, this time. So they give everybody the day off to go to the fair. Uh, I don't go to the fair. That place sucks. Um, but uh, it really took till like Friday for me to finally like I think my body's finally on like, central time and my sleeping schedule's like fixed. So yeah, it was. But you know, with the whole thing itself, I it was a blast. Um, I'm really happy I went. Uh, I'm hoping we do it again. Uh, it was extremely nerve wracking for me because uh, like, I've been talking to these guys for eight years or so um, at most for some of these guys, a few years for some of the other ones. And uh, I was the only one there out of the 19 not to meet anybody else in the group yet. Uh, everybody else had at least known a few other people in the group. Like, I met them in person. Yeah. And I had met none of them. Um, and it was kind of cool. Like, every time I we, like I meet them in packs. Like, here's a few of them here. Here's a few there. Like, hey, here's a few here. And it was just like, it was like we all introduced ourselves. But most, most of us already knew who we were just based on the voice. And, like, we've seen each other on, like, you know, Facebook and stuff like that a lot. So we all kind of know what we look like. And I'm pretty obvious being the only ginger in the group. And, um, <laughs> but it was like like 20 seconds of awkwardness of like after we introduced each other or like met each other like in person for the first time. And then it was just like, bam. It was just like we were like bullshitting on PlayStation chat, like on, the, on a party chat or something <laughs> or a Facebook group. It was just like we all like synced up immediately. And it was just like we've been friends for years, like in like real life. It was just – it was awesome. Uh I, it was like I told Jake after we got back to the room on Saturday night. It was like I'm having the time of my life right now, uh, but I'm ready to go home because <laughs> uh, I was 
yeah, it was just it was fun and exhausting. Uh, I would say if people have never been in Vegas before, uh, three days is like the perfect amount of time to be there for. And either get a super early flight or a uh, evening flight because getting a flight midday sucks because you can't do anything. You just gotta sit around and wait for the go uh, to get you know to get to your gate. Because uh, my flight was supposed to be at noon, and um, I wanted to leave a couple hours early, and all I could do was sit around and wait um, until uh, it's time to go to the airport. So, but uh, no, it was I had fun. It was a blast. I'm happy I did it. Um, uh, I hope we do it again for a 15 year or maybe 20 year, hopefully 15 year. Um, yeah, it was a blast. Uh, so yeah, that is, that was pretty much my trip. Uh, there is, a, you know, I would recommend, you know, you can look on, uh, if you want to see some pictures and some fun videos, uh, you could go like on my Instagram page. I think it's gingerboy507 on Twitter, uh, gingerboy underscore DN and, or just go to on Facebook, check out talking ship. Uh, they have a really cool group on there and, there is just a shit ton of uh, vid- videos and pictures, and there's probably a lot more out there that haven't been posted yet. Maybe that's probably a good thing because some of those are probably um, pretty bad. Um, <laughs> Most <laughs> it was likely. fun, and at one point, like at one point, because I was wearing the bride to be uh, bride to be sash, uh, a waitress thought that me and Chelsea were married. Oh. Um, oh. So then there was a brief argument over who gets Jason. Um, <laughs> I, I lost that battle. Um, but I tried, you know, not giving up hope yet. Got to keep up the good fight. Um, yeah, that is my that is my trip. Uh, sorry to get a little long winded with that, um, but there is a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of news oh. uh, that happened this week. I was worried you know, with us being with us being um, off last week, not, not doing a normal show. I'm like, watch, it's gonna be like it's gonna be like E3 or something. Like everything's gonna happen, and. Surprisingly, not a lot happened. No, I guess not not too surprising because it's been summertime. But this week, it started off with a bang. It seemed like every day was something big yep. that happened uh, in the world of gaming. So, yeah. So, I think we'll start with um, start with some of the good news first. Uh, so, it started off, I think it was like on Monday night or Tuesday morning. They announced, uh, Nintendo announced that there's going to be a Smash Brothers Ultimate Direct. Uh, and I think that was on Wednesday morning. I was able to... Uh, Avoid spoilers all day and then uh, watch it when I got home, which was tough to do, um, being so early in the morning. Um, I think it was like what seven year time, nine o'clock my time, um, so made for a very long day. When I just want to know what happened. So, anyways, um, a lot of news came out of this. Uh, starting off with uh, uh, Luigi died. Man, this is <laughs> Luigi. Off. That was crazy. Didn't see that happening. <laughs> But um, Simon Belmont, uh, Belmont was announced uh, as a fighter um, from the Castlevania series, along with Richter, who is an Echo fighter for Simon. Uh, showed off a bunch of assist trophies and different items and Pokemon that come on the Pokeballs. Uh, Chrome uh, and Dark Samus announced as Echo fighters. Uh, is Chrome an Echo fighter for like Marth or? Let's see. I think for what Chrome is is like an Echo fighter. It looks like for Ike possibly because oh, there's like various okay. moves it looked like in the video where it's like a mixture between like marth and like ike and stuff like that but i am assuming it's okay. probably an echo fighter or two like ike okay I, I missed that part but dark samus is the echo fighter for samus obviously um there's gonna be more des- more character designs to come uh, all characters will be revealed before launch meaning there's probably gonna be more echo characters at, at the very least possibly more characters at most um you can actually save game type preferences, uh, which is, I don't know why it took six games to do it, but they finally did it, where um, it used to be when you go and do a smash mode, you always it always was set for two-minute uh, games, and you had to go in every single time and change it to stock, because everybody plays stock. That's a real way to play Smash Brothers. And, or you can change it to whatever game type you want to do. Now you can actually save it, and it'll just stay like that. Um you actually now you pick maps before you pick characters, and there's 103 maps. Um, and that's not including like the battlefield and final destination stuff. Like apparently, there's like there's like over 300 different combinations you can do with that. Um, they announced a 5v5 and a 3v3 mode, uh, which is really cool. That's something I really liked about Dragon Ball Fighters, and I guess uh, like uh, like Marvel versus Capcom has been doing that for years. Um, so it's cool to hear see if they're bringing that along. Um, they are doing a stage morph. Uh, that allows you to change. Well, you can set it up so like the, the stages will change mid match. Um, you can set it up like at the one minute mark. You could do it like randomly. Um, 
but at the beginning of it, you could pick two different stages, and at the at some point in the, the middle of the match, it'll switch um, to a different stage. Uh, like I said, 103 levels and over 900 hours of music, and you can actually like if you want to, which I don't know why you would, but you can use your Switch as like an iPod, uh, and you can put your Switch in like a sleep mode essentially, and listen to the music with the headphones um, as you like walk down the street. Uh, then King K. Rule was announced as a new character, uh, which was a really awesome troll. And if you haven't seen the uh, Nintendo New York store where people were watching it live, uh, the reactions uh, to that when they got trolled a little bit, when it was like King D2D, uh, were like from the people there was was awesome. Like they they fully bought into it when like they showed the shadow King K. Rule, people were losing their mind. And then like the t- then there was uh, King D2D took the <laughs> the the. the costume off and it was him and i was like oh and then uh king k roll came back and attacked uh attacked him and uh everybody freaked out again it was pretty cool uh so far now there are 73 fighters announced um and there is one mode that is kept secret they actually blurred it out of the main menu they're gonna announce it later but it looks like it's gonna be called spirit um according to some people that like have kind of looked into it like the uh the um the outline of it of the blurred part kind of makes out like spirit and also the uh on the japanese direct people were trying to figure out what the uh translated and what they can see from the blur and it looks like it kind of says spirit so nobody really knows what that is um but we'll, we'll hear more about that soon they said uh so gables what did you think of the nintendo direct okay where to begin here um let's see when the Nintendo Direct was going on and stuff, I obviously was at work, so I went ahead during my lunch break, went over to, like, uh, Safeway and stuff, just, like, chilled, and I just started watching a little bit of it, and, like, the moment, the moment the video began and stuff, and all of a sudden I just see Luigi walking into a castle, it's like, wait a minute, no, it can't be right. Then all of a sudden I just started seeing familiar faces from, like, uh, the the Castlevania series pop up one at the time, like, oh, is that a mummy? It's like, wait a minute. That looks like Medusa. It's like, all of a sudden, death comes over in front of Luigi. like, oh my god. <laughs> Not only that, if he fucking kills him right then and there, it's like, what the fuck is going on? And it's like, yep, it's Simon Belmont. And not just any version of Simon Belmont. It's the one that's originally on the cover art for the NES games. <laughs> no, the inclusion of Simon Belmont I've been wanting inside of Smash for quite a long time now. I mean, as far back that I can remember, say, as uh, Super Smash Brothers Brawl <laughs> back around 2008. Yeah, 2008. But uh, even though I... Let's see. Simon Belmont, though he did sort of surprise me and stuff like that, I was kind of expecting things to possibly go that way, considering that there were pretty much like a bunch of other types of things maybe suggesting that he could possibly be inside there. But what made me even more like just kind of surprised, though, and just kind of like took me off guard was the inclusion of Richter Belmont, which that's that in of itself is a great touch to the detail. It's like I did was not expecting another fighter from the Castlevania series all of a sudden to just be alongside like Simon. And it makes total sense too, considering that uh from my perspective, because of the move set of say Simon Belmont is sort of limited in terms of uh how he was in terms of like say Castlevania and then Super Castlevania four so the only other Belmont that actually has a more various move set is Richter, and so combining the two move, you know, the two like attacks and everything together, and having Richter be like an Echo Fighter for Simon, that makes a hell of a lot of sense. And I was kind of surprised I did not think of that type of option earlier, but it's pretty cool because it's like you got you got representation from a pretty much two games that uh, their versions. Let's see were not very much known inside the West up until, like, the PSP release. Well, Richter's game was not even released stateside until, like, about uh, on the PSP, I think around 2008, 2009 or something with uh, Dracula the X Chronicles. I mean, Symphony of the Night, I mean, yeah, he was in that too, but it's like, he wasn't the center point. It was Alucard, which honestly was later confirmed as an assist trophy too, which that blows my mind, because it's like... Castlevania Symphony of the Night. We're getting tracks from that game inside of Smash, and we're getting like Alucard and like the various like things of Castlevania on there, and it's like that game never appeared on Nintendo systems. Not even any mentions of it. it yeah. That is weird as hell to me. <laughs> it's like well, it's like Cloud being in 
Smash Brothers. Exactly. It sort of feels like, like it that way to me. But I'll yeah. tell you what, though. It's like, I'm excited to see Castlevania finally represented inside of this, like, all-star sort of, like, sit no, just this all-star matchup where it just feels like it's it's basically a big old pipe dream that Super Smash Brothers in conception probably never was probably meant to be like that when it first started, but that's how everyone else of the fans over the years kind of expected it to be. Sort of like similar to what we're getting this December <laughs> in Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. I love the inclusion of Krom and Dark Samus. More so Dark Samus because that character I actually would love to try to play a little bit as. Plus, it's the only other character I can think of in the Metroid series that actually makes any logical sense of being on the main roster. I mean, you have like other type of like hunters and stuff from uh, Metroid Prime Hunters and stuff like that, but those probably could be at best, maybe assist trophies. But at the same time, even with a bunch of the Echo Fighters, it just kind of blows my mind that even after the confirmation that and also the whole thing with a King K rule, which that kind of threw me off guard by surprise. It's like, no, no. What really pissed me off, though, is the way I found out K rule was inside Smash was that one of my friends at work saw the fucking video of something like on Facebook. And as I'm coming back from my lunch break like hey you know they confirmed k rule in the smash brothers right i'm like what oh asshole <laughs> and hence he's also the reason why i have not or want to play far cry 5 right now because he fucking spoiled the ending for me <laughs> months ago oh. but uh at that point fuck it... that guy <laughs> that guy's an asshole yeah you tell him when you when you see him now <laughs> This guy I record with out in Iowa. He said you're an asshole. You let him know that. Oh, boy. <clears throat> and honestly, he's actually, even though he technically is sort of like an asshole, and I've actually said to him, it's like, man, you're like a fucking cat. But anyway. <laughs> anyway. I find out about that, that all of a sudden, immediately, as soon as my last break, is I watch the King K. Rool reveal, and I see Donkey Kong and Diddy Kong just chilling. You see the montage of the heroes and the, and the villains fighting each other and stuff throughout the Nintendo universe. And all of a sudden, you have the flickering of the screen and you have Donkey Kong and Diddy just chilling. Hearing this rumbling sound is like, man, just seeing K. Rule, like what they thought was K. Rule, and then like King Day to Day, and they're like, what the fuck? Then they're like, all of a sudden, just seeing K. Rule just appear, just kick the shit out of DDD, just go forth and just do what he's doing. And not only that, the moves that he's using. Some of those moves are directly from the Donkey Kong Country games. Like his uh, spinning crown attack. It's like all this other stuff. The freaking things from Donkey Kong Country 2 where he's using this freaking musket and stuff. Shooting cannonballs out of it. Man. That was awesome. Dude. It seems like one by one, Sakurai is just basically hitting everything on the wish list of Smash fans customizable rules to the extent where you can actually go forth and you can actually just toggle on and off the freaking final smash stuff to like round robin sort of like rule sets and stuff where you can let the you can let people like say that lost around pick like whatever you can do next or the whole morphing of stages that's yeah. crazy in and of itself though my overall impression after my watching the entirety of that direct then subsequently re-watching it about two or three times and seeing other people react to it and then just seeing guys like uh fighting game fans say like maximilian dude who's like really heavy fighting game like player and stuff just losing his shit because like simon belmont and like fucking dark samus and like seeing this and like th like big old other youtubers and say like uh for that let's see Guys like Shofu and stuff like that, just big old Pokemon fan and stuff, and big old like things, and he's just him and his friends losing their shit. It's like, man, it takes. I'm gonna say this right now. For me, it takes a hell of a lot for me to actually get that excited about a game. I mean, here's the thing: video games. It's like, hey, I've played enough of them to where I've seen a bunch of reveals, I've seen a bunch of good stuff, seen a bunch of heartbreak in terms of game reveals, gameplays, just stuff like that. But actually going forth and just coming th forth with the effort and stuff that uh, I'm seeing from Sakurai, this this just not only, this direct not only impressed me, but it just blew my mind just how much content is stuffed inside this, even after the Smash Brothers game that they released on the Wii U. I thought that was one of the best Smash Brothers games. 
But this one, it's like, you got 28 hours of musical tracks, you got over 100 freaking stages to choose from, and there's still a lot more to be revealed inside this game. And I, and I actually did not notice this up until I rewatched it, but these are not all the characters. These are not all the characters that are going to be fucking, like, revealed before the end of the freaking, before it releases. It's like, what, Wah. what other characters besides some of the obvious can you actually fit inside, uh, you know, fit inside there? You know, I, you, I'm just fucking happy with what I got right now. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm never satisfied. <laughs> there's, there, there's there's two things you could do to satisfy me with this game. And what's that? One's unrealistic. The other one, it should have happened years ago. Okay. Obviously, Waluigi. Yeah. Get that motherfucker in the game. And two, this one will never happen, but but you never know. I want the boop the boopa guy from the pink thing from Dragon Ball Fighters. The pink. If we can get that in there, what's the the Bobby, booba? <laughs> What's the fat pink guy? Majin Buu. Yeah, Majin Buu. Get that guy in there. That guy's awesome, dude. I'll tell you. I want him. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what will make everybody lose their shit if, say, somehow they got Goku inside of there. <laughs> no, nope, not good enough. I want Majin Buu. Get him in the game, man. You really like playing as Majin Buu, don't you? He's the best character. He's the best character in there. Yeah, other than the one guy with the blonde hair and the and the leather jacket, I can't remember his name. Trunks. Yeah, that guy's awesome. Yeah, too. Trunks is awesome to combo with. He, but he's no Majin Buu. Oh, that's true. <laughs> so. But dude, but if you if you can get Hyper, Hyper Light Drifter guy in there too, that'd be great too. Oh, so, oh man, man. Speaking of indie characters and stuff like that, you see Shovel Knight is an assist trophy. Man. Bullshit, man. Ah. I was when I saw him, I'm like. <gasps> Oh. That's exactly the action. Oh. That's actually the reaction I had with Alucard <laughs> from Castlevania. Mm. But at the same point, I'm at that I'm at that point in self where it's like, you know, that's not so bad. I mean, yeah, I would love to have him as a character, but man, look at all these yeah. fucking good characters that we're getting. You know? Oh yeah, I mean, it's hard to I mean, it's hard to complain. This game, it, it's like, it really feels like the ultimate. Like they're living up to that. Where like every fighting game seems like there's a super version then there's an ultimate version yeah um deluxe version you know like dude like street fighter and you know what they're doing right this feels like it's it what you know you know what they're doing right they're making this game so like colossal and stuff like that i don't know if they'll ever top that yeah dude this yeah. feels like the That's... last smash brothers game yeah it, it, it's it's crazy it's like this game isn't even hit. i gotta sneeze again All oh right. boy it's, oh no, it's gone. It's gone. Uh, sorry. Uh, no, it's just like it, it, like the game is like four months away, and I'm just sitting there like, how are they gonna top this damn game? Like, that's the way I felt E3 when they announced all the characters. I'm like, this is it. Like, th there's you can't come back from this. Like, I don't know what you can do besides like minor like adjustments on uh, like on the next one. Like, because you you gotta like you have to bring all the characters back every time now. Like, you, you can't, like, not bring back every character. I know. Look at like, the new characters they brought inside this game already. You know, just new yeah. characters. You have the Inkling. You have, like, guys like Ridley. Fucking, now you got, like, Simon and Richter Belmont. You got, like, Chrom, Dark Samus. You got King K. Rule inside there as well. On top of all the characters that were not there in the last Smash Brothers game. Like, you know, like, Pac-Man. Like, well, actually, Pac-Man was in there. Snake. You know, fucking Snake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Uh, Pichu, Young Link, Toon Link. Oh my god, yeah, that's crazy. Even the ice climbers. 103 maps. It's just, um, yeah, that's great. Uh, oh, that new Donk yeah, City I, stage, man. Oh yeah, I, I'm actually most still most excited about the Breath of the Wild oh, stage, y'all. But yeah, yeah, that one, that one looks pretty cool, especially with the one up. Uh, was it one up Superstar? Uh, was it what's the the the, the I can't remember the song. Uh, one up something though. Um, but yeah, I, when I came away from this, uh, E3, Justin and I were texting back and forth and my response to him was about it was like, this is what the E3 direct should have been here. Oh yeah. No like, shit. Take out the 25 minutes of shit that we don't like 9% of the people don't care about. Like even myself, um, and put that in there and you would have had, we, everybody thoughts would have won. You could have kept the Ridley in there, saved King K rule and. Simon Belmont for later, uh, but 
and like made that its own like made a direct out of that with the stuff you announced it. Like just swap those two things around, and you would have had a great direct, uh, E3 direct. You would they probably would have won E3, because um, everything announced in here. This is stuff that like, not I'm not there to say casual fans care about too much, but there's a lot more stuff we could take away from this as a casual fan, uh, or as a hardcore fan even uh, could could out then. Like the the one my my complaint for the the direct at E three was it was too inside baseball it felt more like it was for like the pro gamers and like the super hardcores and this is like for everybody else oh yeah um, I can't wait from this uh, after the E three direct I was kind of like down a little bit on Smash and I can't wait from this just like hyped all over again oh yeah um, which maybe is a good thing I don't know maybe it's better to get the bad stuff out of the way and have the good stuff later. Um, but yeah, this was awesome. Like the the new game modes, uh, all all the new characters are exciting, and I don't even, I, mean, I don't really care about them that much. Uh, I'm not a Castlevania guy. I don't really care for King K. Rule, but it's just awesome that they're there. I'm yeah. excited for the people that are excited. Um, and just yeah, everything like everything about it, like seeing more details about more stages, uh, all that. It was awesome. I I loved it. Uh, so. Yeah, I don't. You know, obviously, it looks like we're gonna get some more details soon. Might might even be another direct here sometime, in, like later this year. Um, I am still really cur- excuse me, really curious what the uh, that hidden thing is on the map. I'm hoping for uh, a lot of people are talking about. Is this like the subspace uh, emissary, where it was called? Uh, and I'm hoping it's more like a if they just like do what like a lot of fighting games have been doing lately. With like Mortal Kombat started it when they rebooted it with NetherRealm, um, and like the Injustice games and Dragon Ball Fighters, where it's like a story mode. Like you don't have to do like the subspace stuff. That's fine. Like I don't actually. I'd rather much rather have like if they just had it like it's a fighting game, like with the story mode to it, and you just give me reasons to fight with these characters and just play the you just but the fighting is just a regular game. Huh. That would be awesome. Yeah, that would be. Like you got you got seventy three characters right now. Uh, you're probably gonna you're gonna have more out, uh, here before the game comes out. Uh, you can easily make a really fun story mode like a Mortal Kombat or uh, Dragon Ball Fighters. I kind of uh, I kind of personally hope they would actually make it a more tune of say like an adventure mode. You know, kind of like how they did with Melee, where you went mm-hmm. through specific portions, you battled a specific amount of characters and stuff. Only like sort of mix it around and stuff like that. I'm not saying like a classic mode. No, I mean classic mode is there. It's finally back. But yeah. Man, Adventure Mode of Melee was pretty awesome in and of itself because you had a set amount of characters you can play against. It would be mixed up in terms of like certain formats, one on one, like one on two, you know, two on two and stuff. But yeah. it also had those little obstacle course things that you had to navigate around, like racing across the Mushroom yep. Kingdom and like try to find the Triforce or something inside of a little Hyrule Temple thing. And that would lead up to the battle with like Link or Zelda or Ganondorf or whatever the hell. But, uh,. Something akin to that, where at the end and stuff, you have to face off against Master Hand and stuff, and Crazy Hand, just do all that other awesome yeah. stuff. Oh, that would help. The events and everything, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I would, I would love, like they just um, do more of that. I, I'm just hoping, like, because there's a lot, a lot of like, is it gonna be like boss mode where like you're, because uh, when they they showed up King K rule, like they showed like uh, Samus versus Ridley, Link versus Ganon. Mario versus Bowser. They showed up all these like iconic uh, heroes versus villains in their in their history, and then they showed Donkey Kong versus King K. Rool. Nice. So people are like, "Is this going to be like you could like a boss rush mode where you fight all the bosses of Nintendo?" Oh, uh, which would be really cool. Yeah, that would. Uh, so I don't know. I I mean, I can't wait. Way more excited for this game than I was before, which I was already really excited for it. Yep. Uh, so they're doing a good job. I was shocked, you know, how early. Um, you know, here we are, early August, already doing this. When we have other stuff coming sooner, like uh, um, Dark Souls is coming. We got the online coming. Uh, we got Pokemon before that. Uh, so I was a little shocked how early they did it, but it, it was awesome. So hopefully they can kind of keep riding this wave, and we hear more soon. Oh my gosh. Um. But go ahead. I was like, oh my gosh, man. It's like, and they still haven't said like pretty much for the rest of the year what they're releasing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, still waiting on Hyperlight Drifter for the Switch. Yep. But. So it's going on this summer. It's fucking August 11th. Uh, but um, same with Dark Souls. That's supposed to come out this summer. Yep. So, I mean, yeah. So uh, moving on to uh, a couple of other topics here. So we got some gameplay this week. Uh, a couple of games. Uh, first up, 
uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 got its first gameplay shown off um, on Thursday morning. Uh, we will have got a chance to take a look at it. Uh, you're I mean, you're more of a Red Dead guy than I am. Okay. Uh, where did where where did you come away on this game? I thought the, the gameplay. I thought the gameplay perspective looked kind of awesome. I mean, immediately from the get go, inside the video, you're seeing like a whole bunch of like the random like scenery of the whole like uh, late 1800s and stuff like that. Like uh, like the start of like the industrial revolution started to begin and stuff with like those, the factories and this and that. Going yeah. through and like being like. You can choose between being uh, like a law by not like a law, but like an honorable, like say, uh, like an honorable cowboy or something like that. Or you could be like like well, Robin Hood, kind of like a, basically. Yeah, basically, and it depends upon like the choices you make. It, they made it a priority in this trailer, in the you know from this Rockstar trailer here, that uh, everything you say or do actually matters. At, at one point and stuff, you were like walking on the street, and all of a sudden, some random lady goes was like, "Oh, hey, you killed my cousin!" You know, just like all yeah. that other shit. And I'm like, "Oh my god." Oh my god, if it's going to be that type of moral binding and stuff, like, every little thing, that's going to be kind of funny just to go forth and, like, maybe just, just screw around with it all of a sudden just to see how, like, certain NPCs or certain things just react to what you do. They look like they are evolving a little bit of, like, what the dead aim, like, the dead eye stuff started to do, which actually makes me a little bit more excited. They actually went on record and saying there's going to be another part to the gameplay for... Red Dead Redemption 2, which I'm kind of looking forward to, because after watching this video, this definitely seems like a game I'm going to be getting into, because everything looks so vast, so crisp, the story behind this looks like it's very intriguing in terms of how you can actually interact with a bunch of the gang members inside the big ol' gang and stuff, you get to know a little bit more about them, and by choosing to do certain things, you get deeper and stuff, so it looks like... It kind of looks like a social ranking system, you know, like how you can maximize like friendship bonds and sort of things and like the gang like that you're accompanying with and this and that. It looks fairly deep and it looks kind of fairly more interesting in some aspects than say Red Dead Redemption was, which, yeah, this is a prequel, <laughs> which kind of in a way makes sense. But the other thing, I kind of wish it was sort of like after the events of the original, but uh, yeah. Other than that, though, I was left very impressed with what was there. Cool. Um, I am, you know, I, it's very well known. I don't hide the fact that I'm not the biggest Rockstar guy. I buy every single one of their games every time. Play it for 10 hours, 15 hours, and then I just kind of fall out of it. Um, did the same thing with Red Dead Redemption 1, Red Dead before that. Um, but, yeah, I mean, watch this gameplay for it. Uh, it definitely, like, they it looks like... They've done a lot. They've used some stuff from the G, what they've learned from the GTA Five. Uh, they've done a lot of uh, expanding uh, on what they did with Red Dead Redemption One, um, especially with some of the morality stuff to it. Yeah, like it was like in the first one, like Marston, uh, he is like he leaves the gang and he's trying to become a good guy again, and like trying to basically like um, make amends for the awful things he did while in the gang. And this one, you're like totally in the gang. Uh, but yeah, it's like you could be Robin Hood or you could just be this complete terrible person. Um, and I think that could be like, that could be kind of cool. It's been a, it's been a little while since we we played a game like a big game like this yep. where they had that kind of system. Uh, or it was overused for a very long time and it's kind of gone away. Um, but this way that it seems like they're doing the way they're showing it at least. Um, yeah, it seems like every little thing you can do matters. Where like in most games they always say that and it never actually is the case really. Um, and this one, if it actually is like that, it's awesome. Like I said, like the the woman yelling at you for killing her cousin. Uh, there's a guy on the ledge, like, uh, barely hanging on. You can choose whether to walk away, save him, or push him off. Yep. Um, oh, God. There's, like, people... There's people, like, like committing crimes out in the... Just out in the desert. And they see you, and it's just, like... They, like, like what are you going to do? Or just walk away. And you can, like, choose whether or not to, like, uh, save these people, or you can just walk away. Um, you know, it's just... Uh, it looks really cool. Some of the, the base stuff, that kind of like, ooh, I don't really want to do that, where you can, like, you have, like, camps you, have to, you can take care of and you can get food and money for. Uh, uh, that stuff looks terrible. Bring it back to, like, Fallout 4. Like, that was the worst part about Fallout 4. Um, uh, I mean, not to say it, I mean, it's, a, it's, like, a technical bad thing. Uh, just I did not enjoy doing it. I know a lot of people that still just play Fallout 4 because of that system. Like, that's what kept them going. 
Um, so I'm sure that makes sense to do that. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, I, every every time with the G2, with the Rockstar games, I'm like, I'm not going to buy your game. I'm not going to buy it. Like, I'm not, I know what's going to happen. And every time I buy their damn game. So I'm going to say right now, uh, I'm not planning on buying this game. I don't plan on playing it, but I'm more than likely I'm going to buy it. Um, it's going to happen. <laughs> uh, especially because right before Extra Life and uh, there's like everything like is like either way before Extra Life or way after mm-hmm. Extra Life or right after Extra Life yep. that's coming out because we're trying to avoid this game. So this game is kind of like destroying my Extra Life day. Uh, because nobody's going to come out around it. Uh, so I'm probably going to buy this just because of that reason, uh, just for something to play, and it just kind of comes out like the week before. Um, so by the way... And also, go ahead. By the way, when what day is Extra Life this year? Uh, I want to say November 3rd. Let me look it up. I have... Extra life here, my favorites. Yeah, it's loading right now. Yeah, because it's like just knowing the day itself and stuff could actually decide like whether or not you're gonna spend like maybe a good maybe a good chunk of that playing Red Dead Redemption. Yeah, <laughs> no, November third is when it is. So it comes out o- October twenty sixth. So it comes out the week before. Yep. Uh, so like as soon as I saw that date and I knew what the date of Extra Life was, and then E three because E three is always kind of my my barometer of like yep. what I'm gonna play. You... Uh, like last year, it's like Wolfenstein. Sass Creed, Mario all came out like the week before. Oh, that was such a dream. Like, yeah. Uh, and then this year it's just like Red Dead uh, Redemption 2. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Red Dead Redemption 2 just kind of destroyed that for That's me. it. So, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Like the, the two games I'm most excited for outside of that. Well, Spider Man is the one I'm most excited for, but then the two games uh, I'm most excited to play after that um, come out in um, right after Extra Life. So, in Pokemon and Smash. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm probably in on buying it. I don't know why I keep saying I'm not going to. I'm going to buy into the hype like I do all the time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I do it like five times a year. Like a game I'm not interested in. And, and like the week before, like right after when it comes out, I hear nothing but positive things. I'm like, ah, right, fuck it. I'll go buy it. And I buy it and play for five hours or ten hours. And I'm like, ah, I'm done. So, yeah. Uh, I'm not trying to knock the game. It's just not my type of game. I, I recognize that Rockstar makes fantastic games. Uh, but they're just uh, outside of Bully. Uh, I don't really care for uh, uh, Rockstar games. But if you make a Bully too, uh, even just HD remake Bully, I'd be very happy. Uh, mm, so do that, please. Yes, actually. it's been an incredibly long time since I've actually played a Rockstar Games game itself since the whole yeah. Grand Theft Auto V fiasco I had in on PS3. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. So Which is almost five yeah, years so, old, actually, now that I think about it. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy to think that this is like their first real... Like, GTA V is like the, like the highest-selling game on this generation of consoles yep. it's it's a last gen game um which is crazy i think um but yeah let's uh let's move on to a game that i am extremely excited about oh. um uh, doom eternal mm. uh finally got some gameplay for that uh, quake was uh was on friday um showed off some gameplay for uh rage 2 as well that looks awesome uh, then they announced that uh, quake champions is going free to play on on pc uh, but probably the, the real meat and potatoes for us, anyways, is uh, Doom Eternal was showing off. We got like oh, yeah. 25 minutes of gameplay. Cool. Uh, dude, I didn't, you know, I, you know they could have just made it like cut and pasted it on, on like Doom on Earth, and I would have been like totally in. Yeah. But they have like, they have found a way to make this game look and oh, look so much better. Um, so some of the big things they change is like you're almost like the predator now from like the movies oh. where you have like a little rocket launcher flamethrower thing on your shoulder yep. that comes out like predator had like the laser that he has like a flamethrower uh he even has like the little knife on his wrist like the predator had oh my God, yeah. um they uses a melee and then the shotgun the super shotgun has a like a grappling hook yeah, on it that's so fucking they, insane s- yeah so they, they have like made this game like way more like uh you can like the way you move around is like so much faster. Like the game was already extremely fast. Like you're like fucking running like a two three forty uh, yard dash here, and they have found a way to make it like you are moving faster than ever before. Feels like you're moving in just like, cause. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it really is. Like they just like it really feels like. I mean, that's one thing I love about like Bethesda games is like it feels like all the studios work together because it's like you want like 
I remember when, like E3 last year when we're looking at Wolfenstein 2. I'm like, that looks like they just used some Doom elements. Yep. Um, and like you could argue some there's some Doom elements that are things in Doom that came from like Wolfenstein uh, with the machine gun guys. Technically, and it's like technically Tyler, there are like references to both series inside each particular game in the Wolfenstein series. Yeah. References to Doom, and then there's like inside yeah. Doom there's references to the Wolfenstein. You know, it's like it's so fucking I think, nuts. Yeah, like the Doom guy is like the believed to be like a. Uh, ancestor of the um, Blaskewis from Wolfenstein. Yep. Uh, yeah, it's just yeah, it's crazy, but it's just like yeah, like no, it's just like Rage Two looks like like a lot like Doom, um, and like now they have like the grappling hook like j- from Just Cause. Uh, it's gonna be crazy. We're gonna have like the fucking dragon shout here in Doom Three. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> that would be amazing. Uh, maybe the, maybe the Doom guy can be in Elder Scrolls Six. I'd play it. I'd buy that game. No, dude. Uh, that'd be awesome. That'd be kind of funny as, like, all of a sudden, it's like you get to that certain part of the game, and all of a sudden, you're like, you just get a flashback or something like that of his humble beginnings or something like that, and he was just there with BJ Blazkowicz. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm totally in for that. I would love it'd be so fucking dude. crazy that it would just blow my mind. That's what it would be. Yeah. Yes. I'm all for that. Make that so. Um, never gonna happen, but make it so. Um, but yeah, you like, so you have the grappling hook now, so you can, like, jump uh shoot a guy at the grappling hook and like uh go towards him and like melee him uh they added some of the new care some new car- uh enemies from like the original game you have like the the soldiers uh one part there's like uh demons is a is a slur uh we like to we like to use morally challenged the morally challenged uh, which, <laughs> which was i awesome. laughed so hard at that yeah that was great <laughs> um, that's, you know what that's yeah. playing poking fun at right <laughs> What's that? Dude, you know how people were, like, so up... You know, like, some, like, uh, Nazi sympathizers were, like, so up at arms and stuff from, like, Wolfenstein 2? Yeah. Oh, dude, it... The way that they phrase that in that trailer and stuff like that... We don't like to call them the freaking... It's, like, poking fun at the people that get so freaking super serious about certain things. Like, you can... You know, oh, that yeah. they... They try to make excuses for people or things that, like, do extremely terrible things. Oh, yeah. Yeah. True. <laughs> Dumbass lip tarts. Oh my um, god! Yeah, Mortal. That, that oh man, that game. Mortal. <laughs> it, it it's like twenty five minutes of just pure orgasm. It just, is what it was, dude. Um, the mu- oh god, the music was fan. Mick Jordan kill Gordon kill it again. What did you think, Gables? Oh my god. Oh my god, this whole trailer is just amazing from beginning to finish. You know, it's like you just thrown into a world. It's a post apocalyptic Earth. It looks like. And quintessentially, you're just doing a bunch of, like, new things and stuff. You're using new forms of melee weapons. You're facing new types of demons. You're just going through, and it's... Oh, man, the whole freaking grappling hook from one thing to another and stuff. Getting to higher places and just comboing and stuff. It just really makes you just... It really gives me the same feeling I did when I started playing Doom on the PS4 a couple years ago. And now, all I'm thinking about is wanting to play Doom 2. <laughs> I just wish they would have gave the release date for this stuff, you know? Yeah. We got we got a release window in 2019. Okay, so, so it's next year. It's <sighs> something. Hopefully next year. Um, oh, man. Yeah, I, I mean, we could just, like, go on and on about how great that game looked. But, yeah, like, we were already super pumped, and they somehow, like, I don't know how they lived up to the hype for, I guess, for me and you. But they they did and they blew that away. Oh my god! <laughs> I don't know how excited I've been to play a game, at, um, in a very long time. Like this, the excitement level I'm at right now, is a level I have not been forever. Uh, I can't think of a game where I was this pumped. Maybe like MGS Five for the last time I've been that excited, <laughs> this excited for a game, uh, which is saying something. Um, but yeah, oh boy, that game looks great. Um. But let's move on to our last topic of the show. Yeah. Uh, this this one's a little bit of a this one's a heavy one. A lot of going on with this one. So for people that know, this happened like late, late, late Tuesday night, mm-hmm. um, and um, it has to do with IGN. For um, so basically, um, I'm not gonna, I don't even know how to pronounce his last name, but his name is Philip um, Munich. I think is how you say his last name. Um, but he is a uh, Nintendo editor at IGN, or was rather. Um, he released a uh, 
review it went on YouTube uh, for IGN for Dead Cells um, and then uh, I think it was like he released it like on Mon Sunday or Monday and then on that night uh, Tuesday night uh, someone from uh, a website or a YouTube channel called Boomstick Gaming uh, released a video called uh, I think IGN uh, plagiarized my review what do I do and um, that blew up fairly quickly oh yeah um and he had like the boomstick guy even had like the video he posted was just like side by side comparisons of like him saying something and then philip from ign saying something that was very very similar um and even a couple points were like the videos that were on they were on the re video reviews were the exact same and at one point the timestamps of the quotes even lined up almost exactly uh so and it wasn't like, ah, uh, you could kind of write it off. Like, it was very specific words. Um, like, uh, like, um, let me see if I can look up here. Okay, so, so, let me kind of read part of this article. So, um, Booster Game posted a video titled, IGN copied my Dead Cell review, what do I do? In it, the video maker plays a sequence of clips from his own review of the roguelike action platformer and compares them to the IGN video review, uh, revealing a number of phrases that are striking similar. So, and, um... Boomstick review that came out a week before Phillips did. Um, this is a quote from the review. Uh, this combat system is fast, fluid, responsive, and one of the most rewarding represent representations of 2D combat of, of the entire game. Uh, and then Phillips' uh, quote from his was, Fights are fast, fluid, responsive, and hands down one of the most uh, gratifying represent representations of video game combat I've ever experienced. Um, so the text is very similar. They, so a lot of the words, like the fast fluid responsive represent representations um a lot of that and he just like he, and this goes on and on and on uh like throughout the entire review it pretty much feels like 75 80 percent of this review is kind of uh, pretty much uh, taken with, with a few words uh kind of moved around or replaced uh but few and far between um so this came out uh kind of went on all day tuesday uh kind of took over the internet um and then late Wednesday night, um, they uh, uh, IGN announced that they uh, uh, had parted ways with Philip. Uh, he was terminated from IGN. Um, and so some stuff came out. Jason Schreier of Kotaku, whose article I'm currently reading right now, um, he um, he posted. Uh, some people like were posting things like there's a review of from Nintendo Life. Uh, there's a FIFA 18 review for the Switch that um, not as bad as this one, but there's definitely you can see where like. Um, it looks like he might have uh, taken some things from the video review from uh, Nintendo Life for the FIFA 18 for Switch and made it for his own. Uh, not Like I said, not as uh, obvious, not as bad as the Dead Cells one. Uh, and then uh, Philip finally on Friday night released a uh, kind of a, uh, not, I don't know if I, what you want, a rebuttal. It's not really an apology. I don't really it's know what it is. It's more of a response. Yeah, that's a better way to put it. So he responded. He basically he made a video uh, on YouTube on his uh, a YouTube channel, which was he was a pretty he had a decent following on YouTube before he was hired by IGN, which is the reason he got hired by IGN. Um, coming on there, saying um, that he uh, it was not intentional. Uh, he uses uh, he watches other reviews, reads other people's opinions before um, writing his own, um, and basically he was very stressed and all blah blah blah. Uh, so kind of long story short he said uh he kind of accused kotaku and jay schreier of getting uh, clicks off his name and kicking a man while he's down and uh he did not uh basically denied everything saying he did not uh take he did not um plagiarize this video hmm. and then um said told jay schreier i i see i see you posting about the fifa 18 review uh and told him to keep looking and let me know if you find anything uh denying everything uh and didn't didn't apologize for anything um, at all. Basically denied everything. Uh, kind of a lot of people came off uh, as did not make did not look good for him. Oh, the way he came oh off no, this. not at all. Yeah, no. So he uh, and there's a kind of there's actually a kind of a worse part to that too. I think he actually deleted the video that he actually uploaded. Yeah. So the video has been deleted. Um, there was some backlash too because he was monetizing off the video. Wow. Uh, and then. Jason Schreier, a few hours later, uh, 
found a uh, another review of his he did for uh, Mega or uh, sorry Metroid Samus Returns, um, where uh, Engadget did a, re a video review, and then a couple days later, uh, five days later actually, he did a review a video review on his own um, uh, YouTube channel, and this one uh, is about as bad if not as bad as the Dead Cells one, where it's not even like you can't even deny the fact. Holy shit! Uh, so. He challenged him. He found it. Uh, he challenged Jason. Jason found more. Uh, but yeah, so Phil, yeah, like like Gables was saying, he deleted the the video, uh, and there was some like some complaints going on because like he was like in the comment section, it looked like people were like being super positive to him on the video. Come to find out, he was like uh, liking those, and they would, I guess, when you like him or heart something uh, as a com as a YouTuber, it'll pop those ones up to the top. So you would see all the positive stuff uh, first, and then all the negative stuff was pretty much was it was mostly like there was like at one point it was like fourteen hundred uh, likes and like nine thousand dislikes for that video, uh, so it was not going super well for him. Uh, he did not play this off super well. Um, so after all that, uh, it as of Saturday night, nothing else is going on with him uh, other than he deleted the video this afternoon. Um, so Gables, after all this, where are you at on this one, buddy? All right, where to begin with this one now? Well, first and foremost, after doing some bit of research myself, checking out not only like the comparison videos between his review, Philip's review, and from the Indie Gamer website, no, Indie Gamer YouTuber, what's his name again? Forget. I like Boomstick Gaming. Boomstick Gaming. I'm, man, I'm bad with names. I actually subscribed right. to Boomstick Gaming's channel as a result of... Uh, it's a great name, by the yeah, way. it is a great name, <laughs> Boomstick Gaming. And quite honestly, I think it's absolute shit for his review to be plagiarized to that extent. you know. And on top of that, it's also bad for the developers that were behind Dead Cell as well, because Dead Cells, it's been getting some great positive reviews from everyone. And now yeah. their game is coming up with some idiot that goes forth and they're just doing just basic stupid shit because he did not want to write a full-on review. <laughs> oh, bless you. Thank you. So when it comes to Philip, after tracking down his response video, considering he deleted his before he had a chance to watch it, I had to go through and I just went forth on YouTube and said, okay, dead cells. And so I just wrote in Dead Cell's response. And someone actually captured his video that he had uploaded, re-uploaded it. It was fairly early. It was like about a half an hour or something like that. I actually catched it before, like, uh, everything else. Like, uh, <laughs> I basically got it when as soon as they locked it up, you know. So what I ended up doing, I was just watching it. And as I'm just I'm watching his facial expressions, I'm, want, I'm like listening to what he has to say. It's like... He doesn't really apologize for anything. He is blaming Jason Schreier for not only like for like getting clickbaits off of his like uh, you know for his stuff you know from past work that he's done blah 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 and so on and so forth. He makes himself he tries to spin in a way where he's blaming others, and on top of that, spinning it so he's the victim in this case and scenario. Where there's a proven... Now there's a record. There is a actual proven record now that it looks like he's been doing this plagiarizing of like other people's works for game reviews for quite a number of... For like For quite a while now. I mean, you just mentioned the thing with the Metroid, like Samus Returns and stuff. I was unaware of the End Gadget review. Yeah. I was unaware of that until Jason Schreier brought that up. I was definitely unaware of the FIFA 18 stuff the Nintendo Life did, and even though it probably wasn't as bad as, say, like, what the, like, uh, Samus Returns review, and even though the Dead Cells one, man, this is just horrible. Any way you can just search, any way you can look at it and stuff like that. I don't feel sorry for this guy. I definitely do not feel like he's going to repair anything. As a matter of fact, he's making himself more more or less look like a dirt bag because for one he was monetizing off of his own video to try to you know, like to spur some sort of like like sympathy or something like that and he's making money off of that 
you know, that's just all sorts of shady. I have, like, honestly, I am very surprised how IGN handled this situation all. They were very upfront about it after everything all said and done. They were went on record and it's like, we do not tolerate plagiarizing, blah, 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 and so on and so forth. So it was, here's the thing. Even after, like, watching Phillip's review and stuff like that, I know, I'm just going all over the place here. I'm still trying to form, like, cohesive mm-hmm. opinion of this. Right, just watching bits and portions of that and just seeing things being muttered word for word inside Boomstick Gaming's, like, his review upon Dead Cells, and then just seeing the timestamps match the same. I mean, holy crap. And all of that response and stuff, it's like, he blatantly went word for word. It's like he was watching... And I kid you not, he probably was doing this. He was probably watching Boomstick Gaming's review and just recorded his voice in certain timestamps in order to try to go forth and, like, just do a lot of this various, like, things and stuff. But yet I am very happy the way IGN handled it. Not only did they let him go, they issued a statement. And not only that, they redid the review for Dead Cells. And guess what? The person who did it did a hell of a lot better of a job than what Philip did. He actually tried. Well, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's his own writing, so that helps. So, and overall, my thoughts and opinion upon this situation and stuff, it's like, man, it's entirely shitty for a few different parties. Boomstick Gaming, even though now he's now reaping the benefits because of this exposure on a major scale, is now making his channel, as of this recording, like close to around 70,000 subscribers now, and he was a humble little yeah. channel. yeah. He's got, he had, uh, yeah, go ahead. He had like about 10,000 subscribers last weekend. Oh my god! And gosh. that video had over a million list, a million watches or views uh, within a couple of days. And yeah, now he's over 70,000 subscribers. Now he's so. got, he's, now he's, he's doing pretty good for himself now. And that's the thing about the internet. You can't get away for like plagiarism stuff on the internet because people are going to find out. People are going to start digging. And not only that and stuff, the people who actually did the hard work and review and stuff, they're going to reap the benefits, as is readily deserved by Boomstick Gaming, as they deserve, that dude deserves all the credit for doing that review, doing this and do that. He was the victim in this case and scenario. Not just him, yeah, but also the developer of Dead Cells, and even a company like IGN. Because it makes their company look entirely terrible. If they have one of the reviewers knowingly, painstakingly, like, plagiarizing his work in order to try to expand it as his own. Because that reflects upon the company's, their company is like, oh, hey, maybe, uh, their audience, you know, it's like, oh, hey, maybe I shouldn't go to this side. It's like they're blatantly plagiarizing indie gamers' work, you know, indie reviewers, this and that. But, uh, in this situation and stuff, I feel like IGN was in the right to not only let him go... Not only just to like go for the forth and just issue to say, okay, this is our stance on this. Very professional, mind you. And also redo the review. So they're in the right. The person who is the biggest culprit here is this Philip. And I would not go as extreme as some people have been doing and actually just harassing his family and harassing things and all that. I mean, that's extreme. That's very extreme. The yeah. thing about this situation and stuff like that is, hey, let him reap what he sowed. Not only that and stuff, but, hell, I hope he does not have, like, a very lucrative, like, anywhere close to, like, a career or something like that that he had inside video games and stuff. Because even though he has plagiarized stuff, I mean, it would have made a lot better sense in his opinion if he could just own up to it, apologize for what he did, for what he did, not blaming other people for what, you know, basically what, uh... <sighs> for stuff that you know him blaming other people for stuff that he obviously did so it's like the writing's on the wall right here and it's like what i was just thinking just like watching over a lot of this stuff earlier on today it's like if it walks like a duck talks like a duck then man that is one dead duck yeah so (laughs) what do you think upon all this tyler um, I'm pretty much on board with you on everything, you know. I uh, can't wait for him. Like, I am a casual listener of Nintendo Voice Chat on IGN, yeah. which he's been the host of for about a year now. Wow. Um, I didn't, I didn't like, love him. I didn't really hate him. He was just kind of, he was there. Uh, he definitely felt like he kind of went from being, like, this guy with, like, a, much like Boomstick Gaming, where he had, like, a, a 
good following on YouTube to uh, now he is the host of uh, you know a show with hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of listeners um, within just a very short amount of time. Uh, you know, he always kind of looked like he was the. He was always seemed nervous and like almost like maybe the job is like too much for him, probably, uh, or overwhelmed maybe. Um, but he wasn't terrible. He wasn't like he wasn't the highlight of the show. He was never. Right the, back. He was he did he was a good host. I'll say. Uh, he kind of he did a good job of keeping the show in line. Um, but um, yeah. Um, with this with this whole thing like. Coming out Tuesday night, I read about it. Like I knew he, he I watched the review before all this happened. Uh, I, I, I watched most IGN reviews, uh, and um, that was fine. I'm like, oh, I was interested in the game too, because and uh, so when I when I heard about it, I'm like, oh, that's Philip's review because I follow him on Twitter. And I'm like, I knew right away who that was. I'm like, this is not good, um, and but I was just like, ah, it's probably nothing big. It'll probably it's whatever. Then I watched Boomstick Gaming's. Uh, uh, video they did, and I'm just like, uh, he's. And I was talking, Justin and I were texting back and forth that night about it, and I was just like, dude, this, uh, I don't think this looks good for him. This is probably the worst thing you can do, um, as a writer or journalist outside of anything like crazy illegal, outside of like a felony. There's not probably nothing worse you can do, uh, in in that business. And I like Gables was saying, I think IGN did the best they could do to handle it swiftly. You know, it was basically spent the one day uh going over it and um parted ways with them which is the right thing to do i think i, I think there was no other they had no other choice uh th- it was very obvious in this case what was happening um and just when it seemed like it was kind of blown over uh he was he did his, his thing and I, I felt kind of bad for him in a way you know like maybe he was he just he made a mistake he fucked up it's you know uh He's gonna go quiet for a little bit, eat, um, you know, eat, eat uh, some places shit, um, as he probably should be doing, and um, came up with that video, and it's just like, wow, like you, like any sympathy that anybody had for you is now completely gone, um, you know, d- denying it, like Gabe was saying, kind of passing the buck on other people, uh, make you playing the victim card, um, you know, like if. If he would came out in that video and said, "Yo, I fucked up. That was my bad. I did this, and I shouldn't have done it." Um, he, in sometime down the road, he probably could have had a, a job somewhere, maybe not in front of the camera, um, but at the very least, could be doing some stuff behind the scenes somewhere for uh, a company. And now, uh, I don't see how he, this guy. Um, and it sucks being in San Francisco, one of the most expensive places to live in the world, especially most expensive place to live in America. Um, you know. I don't see how anybody could hire this guy, uh, at least anytime soon, because um, he has just made it worse for himself throughout, um, and it sucks, you know. And uh, uh, IGN's taking a lot of heat for it, which um, you know people say, "No, he should have seen this coming." There's there's signs of this, but nobody caught it. You know, he's been there for over a year now, and uh, nobody caught this until this happened, until Boomstick Gaming caught it, and then that's when people looked. Uh, so it's, I, I'm not gonna knock. Uh, so people at IGN for not catching it when millions of people that uh, are listeners of IGN or go on the website uh, didn't catch it for that long either. I think it's ridiculous to think that. Uh, I think that's just people that um, IGN being one of the biggest websites for, for gaming in the world, uh, kind of the downside is where everybody's going to take a chance to kind of knock you. It's like you know, anybody else that's never won anything, uh, the dynasty of whatever. Uh, you're going to take shots for every little thing you do wrong. Um, or people are just going to hate you for no reason just because you're successful. Um, so, I mean, that's part of the game, I guess. But, yeah, it's just, it's a huge bummer. Uh, you know, like, uh, it, it sucks for the people that work there at um, IGN because that's just one more reason for people to hate them. Uh, that's, uh, you know, it's like that just makes their life work that worse. They have somebody that I'm sure that had a lot of friends there. He, was, he seemed like he was well liked, uh, so it's probably uh, uh, a lot of people on Twitter uh, at IGN were talking about it today. You know, Wednesday or Thursday um, was a really shitty day of work. Um, going in, not only dealing with all the investigation stuff and the plagiarism stuff, and then going in on Thursday, and a coworker uh, just got fired. Um, so it's got that sounds like a pretty bad day at the office. Uh, so. Um, 
it sucks, uh, you know, for those guys. Because uh, unfairly, they're going to get a lot of heat for it. Uh, but, I mean, looking at the kind of the, like you're talking about the boomstick gaming guy. Like, uh, I, I liked his response with the whole thing. Where, like, from the beginning, he's like, not trying to get anybody in trouble here. All I want, I'm not trying to ask for money. I'm not asking for anything. I just want my credit and recognition for my review. Yeah, no shit. Uh, which I think is fair. That's 100% fair. And IGN did. They gave him credit for yeah. his review. Yep, and the statement they, they made when Philip when they announced that Philip had been terminated from his contract, uh, they they apologized to Boomstick Gaming. They did a video on YouTube uh, doing the same thing about him being terminated and apologized to Boomstick Gaming. Uh, Philip responded with saying uh, in you know saying uh, apologizing to Boomstick Gaming, uh, but really I don't think anybody needs to apologize for him because this is probably the best thing that happened to him. <laughs> and a lot of people on uh, online were saying it'd be perfect that they hired that guy to replace Philip. Oh, that um, would be the biggest like kick in the pants for that dude too. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I, like he went from being like he had a pretty successful um, YouTube channel to now he's yeah, like you said, he's he's over over seventy. He's his uh, uh, subscriber rate has gone up seven times the amount than when it was this time last wow, week. Wow, yeah, which that's is, true. Which is which is awesome. So uh, I would say he definitely got his recognition. And I watched a couple of his videos since then. You were subscribed to him, and I'm like, ah, he's really good at what he does. Like he's really good. Uh, I hope he gets a like. Maybe he'll get a job out of this. You know, like so. I mean, the only thing I really disagree on you about is like the dead cell stuff. I think like I don't think this is a bad thing at all. Like if this game was came out and it was like a six out of ten, that would be really bad for dead cells. But uh, Philip gave it a 9.7. I think the new review gave it like a 9.4. Um, and the, the uh, Boomstick Gaming re- review gave it like a 9.0. So this is like the fact that this is a very well-loved game. And IGN, even in their um, statement when they got rid of Philip, talked about how everybody in the uh, in the office is loving, loves that game. Um, like that's, you know, it's like not maybe the reason you want to be in the press so much. Um, it's not, you know, when your game comes out. You'd like the that game be talked about so much because of how much people like it, but um, the fact that this has been such a big deal, I think, is probably meant more sales. I think more people are noticing this game because of this fiasco. Oh, yeah. So, I would say probably that game got some more sales out of this whole this whole uh, controversy. And Boomstick Gaming obviously is uh, reaping the benefits of this thing. And I don't, and I don't think like he did this in a, in a mean way. No. Boomstick Gaming, I'm not trying to make something like that. Uh, like, but I think the way he kind of, like I said, the way he came about it saying, I just want recognition for it. I don't want money or anything like that. I just want recognized for my, my work. And that's, like I said, hundred percent fair. Uh, and he's getting recognized for it. And that's just awesome to see at least some positives out of this really shitty, this really shitty situation. Agreed. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I think that's going to wrap up the show Gables. Oh, uh, man. yeah. So we're going to skip what we've been playing this week. Uh, and we didn't even get through all the topics. I have like another four or five. Uh, so, like I said, a lot of like any one of those four topics we talked about today could have been like the main story of yes. uh, uh, any other show, and that was all one week. And we have a few other good ones that we can get to. That way. I guess we could probably save for next week. Um, so yeah, thank you guys uh, for listening. If you want to hear more from us, it's been a couple weeks, so we'll see if I remember all of these. Uh, uh, check us out on Facebook. We have, we have a page and a group, at Drunk Dashers Podcast like to join us on there at twitter at drunk nerds pod follow us on there on twitch.tv slash uh drunk nerds podcast follow us in there send a friend request please uh, like friends friends are good on youtube at drunk nerds podcast uh subscribe to us on, the, on there as well give us a big thumbs up and um also leave a comment really appreciate if you did that and then last but not least check us out on itunes at drunk nerds podcast subscribe to us please and leave us a five-star review with a nice little comment uh we really appreciate you did that as well uh, so until next time guys I was your host I was Tyler and I have been Colonel Gables so until next time everyone have yourself a good week play yourself some decent games and don't forget to listen to a great old episode of the Drunk Dash Nerds Podcast god damn right and hey, Gables yep. too sweet too sweet bye guys see ya <laughs> <laughs>